Here I have the first spear ever made. Pretty simple spear, sharp end, long pole. Not much to it. There's two ways to spear hunt. First is you can throw the spear. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience. And the second is to grab the spear and thrust it. Uh, this isn't a thrusting spear, this is a throwing spear. A thrusting spear's got a lot more meat behind it, a lot thicker. Same broadhead I always use, but that thrusting also takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience, a lot of patience. So both of these are in the film, thrusting and throwing. Spear hunting is active to this day. Of course, myself, that's all I do is spear hunt. There's a handful of men around the world that also spear hunt. I've done some research and the sand men of the Kalahari Desert do it a very unique way. I, I love this. They'll actually hunt on the plains, they'll hunt plains animals, and they'll hunt a kudu, an antelope, and they'll get there, get on the ground, find a track, and they'll follow that track, get on that animal, and they'll push and push that animal to exhaustion. Of course, they'll have their water with them, their supplies, they'll get right up on that animal and take it with a spear. Now that is a true hunter. From my own experiences, I believe at short distances, the spear is just as effective as a rifle or bow and arrow. And I'll tell you why. I've hunted with the rifle, I've shot an animal, they get hit, they run off, and they die. Same thing with archery equipment. You stick an arrow in an animal, it runs off, it dies. Same thing with the spear. You get the animal, you hit them, they run off and die. It's not the weapon, it's the person behind the weapon. If you have a rifle, it's great. But if you have a person that can't shoot straight, it's pretty useless, right? Same thing as archery equipment, bow and arrow. If you've got a person pulled back and can't hit the side of a barn, it's pretty useless. Same thing with a spear. You can have a spear, but if you're a person that can't use it properly, it's useless. But if you put it in the hands of a person that can use it properly, very effective. So remember, it's not the weapon, it's the person behind the weapon. Northern Alberta is a great place, that's where we're going to be hunting this time. The main rules are to get a big bear and to be in the right locations. Lots of people ask me, where do I get a big bear? How do I get a big bear? Do I just wander into a place and it looks good to go set up a bait? No, that's not the thing. You need to find water. Lakes are good, they're okay. Creeks, water systems, anywhere where there's moving water is a highway for animals. So you're going to want to find these. Prevailing wind in Alberta here is from the northwest. So from the northwest, you're going to want to go on the northwest side of the creek, go about 500 meters, you set up, and you're going to be grabbing all that smell, all that smells to be coming down, down the little valley, and all the bears from the kilometer in between, be grabbing that, be at that bait. If you've got a good area, a good bait, you got good wind, the bears will be there within a day or two. Let's talk about bait here. Lots of people, they want to use their donuts, they want to use their meats, they want to, everybody's got their own little potion for baits. For me, what works best, doesn't matter where it is, whether it's uh, a couple miles away from a farmhouse or by, by a boreal forest or it is deep in the forest five hours away where no man goes, dog food works really well. You get dog food, and the best thing about dog food is, it's dry. You're not dealing with blood from your meat, it's rotten, you're not dealing with maggots, it's dry. Dog food can be expensive at 20 bucks a bag, so the best thing is, get a half a barrel of um, oats, grab oats from a farmer, go pay him some cash, do what you gotta do, grab those oats, put them in a barrel, and then you're gonna put some grease in the oats, mix it all around, grab your dog food, put it on top, and the bears will come from everywhere to get that dog food. It's fat, it's greasy, they'll eat it up. The other thing we really need is grease. Grease is a huge essential to hunting bears. Yeah, say if you're hunting and you run out of bait for a couple days, if you have that grease there, they'll be ripping up the ground. They'll want to get at that grease. It'll save you. So make sure you get that grease. Don't come in with a little one liter of grease. Make sure you got big pails of grease. Trust me on this one. When you come back, they'll be digging up big holes. So, number one, dog food, oats, grease, location, location, location. Be on the northwest side of that creek. Be up about 500 meters. You get up there, you're gonna get your bears. You're gonna be getting big bears. Other than that, we'll carry on. We'll show you how to do this.
see behind us? We found our water. In this case, it's a little river. So north is back this way. We're gonna go 500 meters up north and get set up. All that smell is gonna come down all the way through this valley. You get all these bears coming through here. You have to remember, rivers, creeks, streams are highways for animals. Not just bears, moose, deer, any critter. And when you're always hunting, make sure you're around flowing water. So lakes are good, but not as good. Okay, we found a really good spot here. We're north of the creek, about 500 meters. We found this big boro pit. This is, doesn't get any better than this. You get these big boro pits back in the bush, and you get these uh, cranberries that grow back, your raspberries, your blueberries, and the bears are already naturally here. So we're setting up all the barrels right now. We got berries here, we got bears here already. We're on the north side of the creek slash river. Wind's gonna bring it down. Bear's gonna grab that smell and gonna run with it. I'll uh, show you what the boys are doing here. Get the barrel full of oats. Just dump it some out inside. Leave some room for dog food. What are you doing there, Caleb? So we're going to drill a hole in the barrel, stick our wire through here and tie it to the tree. So when the bear comes and sniffs around the bait, he doesn't take off with our barrel. Right. We'll come back and just stop this site. Why is it so important to have our barrel stationed? Because the barrel will come here and lift the the barrels. And we want to come back and restock our bait site and get more bears. Yeah. And we can also control our shots in the bears. If the bear is rolling the barrel 50 yards away, it's tough to get a shot on him. If we have that barrel stationed there and he can't get it, we can place that barrel so we can get a perfect shot. Okay, perfect. We have our oats in there. Can you dump all the, the grease? tree? Yep. We got grease in there. We got grease, we got dog food in there. That's about 400 pounds of bait right there. And we have a bunch on the ground. Make sure we get, when we come back, there's gonna be a big hole there. From all the bears grabbing that grease and digging a big hole. Make sure we, one thing we have to do is we need some get some of that grease back up in the bush, get that scent out there. Tyler's gonna put it up in the trees. That wind's gonna grab that, run it all through that forest. While waiting is the hardest part about hunting. Lots of times they're waiting and nothing comes in. Fortunately, this time, a big old Bruin comes in. He's a little curious right now. I just need to sit tight, let him come in, then make my move. He's not quite comfortable yet. We'll give it a few minutes yet. He's eased up now. I have a good comfort level. Now it's time to act. Now he's looking away. It's time to make another move. It's a pretty risky move. I can make sure my hands are perfect. I need to just take my time. The bear's looking away, but if I fall, it's not gonna be a good situation. As long as I'm up in this tree, he's happy with me being here. If I end up on the ground, I know it won't be good. Like most animals in the woods, they have no place to be and time isn't anything for them.
starting to get a little worried. He saw me move. The last thing I need is for him to come up this tree and check me out. I know what he's thinking right now. He wants me to come down out of this tree. But I'm pretty safe right now. I'm getting a little worried right now. My heart's pumping out of my chest and the bear's climbing up the tree and he's about a meter away right now. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. Everybody knows bears can climb trees pretty fast and he's not too far away. And it's not a little bear. It's a 400 pound plus black bear and the thing's a beast. I just need to sit still, hold tight, and let him get his comfort level again. He's eased off me a bit. Hopefully he'll go by the bait and leave me alone. This place I'm hunting is so far back in the woods. This bear's probably never seen humans before. So I hope it's curiosity. He's going back around, smelling the trail that I came in on. A black bear's sense of smell is absolutely unreal. A bloodhound has an amazing smell, but a black bear, his senses are 60 times better than a bloodhound. So nothing gets by them. I'm just a new smell to him right now, and he doesn't know what to think of me. In the bear world, this bear here is a very dominant bear. If there was another bear here, he would chase him off or chase him up a tree. It seems like a lifetime waiting up here for my chance. There's a lot going through my mind right now. All bears are different. Some bears are very aggressive and will attack. Some bears want nothing to do with humans. And some bears are just curious. I sure hope this isn't the attacking one. Right now, I just need to sit back, stay calm, and let him do his thing. One interesting thing about the black bear, pound for pound in North America is the strongest animal. It's always sitting in the back of my mind. I'm pretty excited right now. It's been about a month of preparation and I've been waiting for this. There's no room for error though. I have about a half a second to make a decision and act. There is no room for error, no room for anything but success. If I mess up, it could be lights out. You can't see me yet, but I climbed down the tree a bit. I'm about two and a half meters from that bear. Fortunately, bears have very bad eyesight. Hopefully he doesn't see me and he just leaves me alone. As soon as he catches movement, he'll be on me. There I am right there.
I'm getting pretty close to that old Yogi Bear. That big old bear sure is taking his time to get back in that barrel. It's killing me. Waiting is really the hardest part. Well, it's time to go to work. Finally, he's in the right position. It's time to make my move. I just hit the camera. Busted. I need to grab my head for a second here. I jumped from the tree and spread a huge bear. I started tracking it, then I realized I need to get my camera. So I come back, get the camera. I need to grab my head while I'm at it. I can't even think straight. I saw it run over the hill, it was hurting bad. I need to give it one second. I should probably give it about 20 minutes, half hour. Do you know when you were a kid, when you were waiting for Christmas morning? Yeah, you know, you couldn't sleep, you couldn't sleep, you couldn't sleep. This is what it's like being an adult waiting on Christmas morning to get your present. Give it about 20 minutes. <clears throat> He's run over this hill here. I'm just gonna walk over there to see if I can see if you lay down right behind it. The way the spear hit him, it was higher up in his body, so there won't be a blood trail. Lucky he was hit solid. Solid, solid. Thing is, you could be <clears throat> 20 yards away from the bear, and they're just blocked like a shadow. You might not be able to see them right away. Stands just back there, about 40 yards. Oh yeah, it's Christmas morning. Ready? <laughs> I wonder if I can see me fall on this log. Ready? There he is. It's a great big black bear killed with a spear. Jumped out of a tree at four yards and plunged the big spear into this guy. It wasn't a big spear, but it was a lethal, lethal hit. Oh, people say spear hunting's not lethal or it's unfair or oh, not humane. This thing only went 60 yards, so no, no, spear hunting's pretty lethal. Oh, let's go check this guy out. What a hunt. Literally in the middle of nowhere, by myself. Got this big, beautiful black bear. Oh, I hunted hard for this guy. What a hunt. I have no words for this hunt. I hunted long and hard. These bays never give up. Just keep on pushing forward. Man. What a night. Jumped out of a tree, four yards, and speared this big black guy, big black bear. Unreal. Dreams do come true. <laughs> oh, the hard work hasn't started yet. Gotta get this guy out of here, get all the meat out, get the hide out, get him in my freezer. A lot of people say black bear meat's not very good. 
You shoot a nice black bear in the fall and in the spring too, but especially in the fall when they've been eating all the berries, they taste absolutely amazing. Black bear meat is absolutely phenomenal. Don't be scared of it. Try it. You'll like it. For now, see you next time. Mike Blanchett. Is that right in the dead center? Mm-hmm. Of course yeah. it is. It's aim for this arrow. Well, tell me about tonight. Well, I'm gonna go sit in the weeds and wait for a bear to come out. How big of a bear? Oh, it's gonna be cranky. Probably about 800 pounds. 800 pounds of what's up? <laughs> 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 All right, let's go, bud. This is one thing overlooked by lots of hunters. Cover up your face, get that gloss off. Just like the rest of your body's camouflage, make sure your face is camouflaged. It'll do wonders. You ready? Yep. I'm ready. It's getting tough. It's getting tough. Down the it's, wire. it's getting tough and out of the water. Between the rain, other things we've been doing, besides hunting not, not ourselves, we really put ourselves in bind. We need to get this film, we need to get this done. Panic mode? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're starting to set in. Panic mode has set in. Oh. We have tonight and tomorrow, and that's it, and we're done. What do you think? Just <laughs> Keep on pounding away at it? Gonna have to. Alright. No other option. As a bear hunter, this is the most crucial time to have patience. The bear is on edge right now. This is the most crucial time. Hunker down, do not move. Let him come in, let him feel comfortable. Have the wind in your favor and it will all work out. Wow, that <laughs> branch just grabbed that arrow and whipped it out of the way. That was a very challenging hunt. Tyler and I worked very hard on getting a black bear on the ground with archery equipment. And if anybody knows, hunting anything on the ground with archery equipment, <laughs> it's very challenging. It's a true hunt. We gotta remember, our shooting lanes. Clean them up, doesn't matter if you're hunting with a rifle, get all those branches, get all that blades of grass out of the way for our shooting lanes. Because a bullet will deflect, not as bad as an arrow, but it will deflect off of a branch. We don't need that affecting our shot. There's nothing worse than eating a shame sandwich on your hunt. And it's a big shame sandwich. So, uh, as always next to you, Tyler. Well, this next hunt is uh, one of one of the first ways I started spear hunting. It's a very unique way to take an animal, any animal. I'm still surprised to this day that I was able to do it and pull it together. It took a lot of work, a lot of practice, and a lot of courage. But uh, I hope you enjoy this next hunt. It's kind of out of sequence, but I really wanted you to see it. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy. Say enjoy.
Fortunately, I was sitting in the stand. Four minutes later, this big black bear came in. He had a beautiful coat and it looked like he was waiting to stay a while. When checking my trail cameras at this bait, I knew there was a big brown bear there also. So the next day, I climbed back up my tree and started at the hunt. This is probably one of the most unique bears you'll get as a bear hunter. There's 11 different phases of colors of the black bear and this chocolate brown is probably one of the most beautiful. Speechless. That was. I can't even. Can't even say what that was. I. I don't know. It's amazing when the bear first came in. I thought there's no way I will ever jump from that tree to try to spear him. He was around more and more and more. And then I just got up enough courage and took the leap and did it. I still can't believe that just happened. And it might as well be Christmas time because I just found my bear. anywhere like absolutely no blood like nothing i have searched high and low through stuff like this i can't believe i have found this this is absolutely amazing well i'll go over the story again i was out just laying in a creek trying to get another bear and the wind just wasn't cooperating so Came up with a clip plan B. Went, like it wasn't really prepared for it. Went and grabbed my cowboy boots, threw my cowboy boots on, grabbed a little bit of camouflage, and uh, there was no tree stand or anything there at all. So what I did was just climb the tree, and uh, the rest is history. Stayed in the tree, had my cowboy boots on, threw a little bit of camouflage on, jumped out of a tree, stroked this bear in midair. And here it is, most absolutely biggest, <coughs> it's a huge bear, I don't even know how much it weighs. I have no idea, but just a big, beautiful bear. I can't believe it. Checking all the trail cameras and there's a great big black bear here, so we're getting the tree stand ready. We'll hunt this bear tonight. All the claw marks in that tree. She's safe? Sturdy. 
Nice. Loaded for bear? Loaded for bear. This is a pretty unique thing we found here. We're going to do the bear baits today. And I found bear wallows before, but I've never seen a bear wallow you can put a quad in. It's not quite a quad, but it's, it's a huge bear wallow. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I've been hunting in grizzly area and black bear area and it looks like a grizzly bear ripped this up this is a black bear actually doing this so it's just to show you how big it is i'm six feet 230 pounds and it makes me look pretty small when you're wondering what a bear wallow is a bear wallow is a bear will come in into a moist area and rip the ground out he's ripping all this ground out he'll actually sit back in here He'll just lay in here. That's how he cools off in the summertime. But it's gotta be three feet deep and eight feet across and eight feet across. I've never seen anything like this in my life. We've put a bait up here with a camera and I'm excited to see what comes out of here because we're hunting an area right now where lots of men don't even go. Like the bear, bear up here don't even know what men are. So I'm excited to see what we're gonna pull out of here. There's an absolute beast. I have a bear here. Uh, it's just, I've never seen anything like this in my life, ever. And I'll show you one more thing, why this is here. Bears need food, bears need a lot of food. We come back here, all these little bushes, all blueberry bushes. They'll just wallow through here all day long. Need these little blueberries. I know when you're going on a hunt, you can be pretty excited, but there's important things to remember. Double check your yardages, double check your equipment. Make sure everything is in tip top shape. You have spent a lot of time, money, and efforts on this. The last thing you want to do is make a bad shot. Not just for yourself, but you owe it to that animal to take it as quickly and humanely as possible. And remember patience. It's the biggest thing you need. This bear needs just a little bit of coaxing to come back in. We'll just give him some time and we'll all come together. One thing I obviously have to admit is barrel placement here. Should have moved around to the other side or move the barrel. We just made our hunt a lot harder this way. Due diligence is very crucial in every hunt. Make sure it's done properly. That darn tree, it eats me. Rookie mistake, but thing is, I'm no rookie. Every little detail counts, especially in hunting. That was a tough shot. That was a big bear. Well, let's go down there and have a look. 
That's a good sign. Where did he go? 50 yards? No. Not even. Randy. So he came through here? Yeah. Oh, look at there. Onto the fall. Yeah, it's a good bear. It's a beautiful bear. Really nice hide for a fall bear. What's the story in this guy? Well, we had a long sit. <laughs> he came in and hid behind the tree. I guess we weren't quite set up right because our sight line was right in line with the with the tree where the barrel was, and he had hid right behind there. So we sat there for probably about 15, 20 minutes, and uh, he laid down in front, and we figured, well, he looks big enough. So we took him. Beautiful bear. Yeah, he is. Good job. Bear. Look at these paws. Holy cow. Yeah, he's a good bear for the first First bear of the trip. Pretty exciting. So we only have what another seven to go? You got seven to go. <laughs> <laughs>
tree stand right there. I think I see something black over there already. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. That's maybe 25 yards. Nice, good job. Look at that thing. That's a big bear, Randy. Wow, how was your night? That was quite a night. This is the biggest bear I ever shot in my life. We've been after him for about two weeks. We spotted him. Uh, we've been baiting him in here. I think this is our third night we've been hunting and uh, just couldn't get him to come in. He just, I don't know, we just, other bears are coming in. We kind of wondered when they showed up, is that him? And we realized, no, no, he's a lot bigger than, than what uh, those bears were. Tonight when I first saw him though, he came in around the side of us. I think he was kind of circling us and I saw him walking through the, the, the low brush. I knew right away. I said, that's him. It was obvious, he was huge. And we waited, he disappeared, he backtracked around. We were up in the, the blind, probably for another five minutes, eight minutes and all of a sudden he showed up coming out to the site and he just came in there and he was walking like a like a horse <laughs> and we uh, he just turned around and as soon as he was broadside we got him let's, let's get a close look at that his paw there that is unreal my hand on his head is It's a big, big bear. Really nice. Not a rub mark, not no. nothing. Perfect. That is the biggest bear I've ever seen, I think. Hey, one thing when we got these bears, it takes a long time to get in, a long time to deal with everything. <laughs> and it's just the whole hunt is tough. And when you get these animals, it's it's worth it. It's a lot of work, but it's it's a, a hunter's dream. Okay, what do we do there, Randy? We'll wash this pole between these trees. We'll pull, put our pull them up. Yeah, we have a. Oh. I'm off on another spear hunting trip. There's one thing that never gets old for me, and that's spear hunting. It takes a lot of skill, time, and efforts to make it come together. When it all comes together, it makes it extra special. You're really close up to the animals, just like this big old Bruin jiggling along to come check me out. When you have one bear to deal with, it's bad enough. As you can see here, there's a second. Makes it a little more intense. You gotta keep on your toes. These two big old boys, they know I'm there. And it's not bothering them one bit. I am mentally prepping for this, putting it all together in my head. It's not the easiest thing to do, especially with two big old boys below ya. I need this other bear out of here. So I poke him in the head with a spear to get him back. Now I have some more room to play with.
Just to think, all this started when I was a kid with just a dream. That one in Michael. You, you are a monster. No, he's getting that answer. I'm gonna tangle. Did Betty get something? <gasps> I, I see it. No, oh, I think it got off. No, sir. Get the net. Get the net. Shoot, shoot. Michael, okay, Ben, stop, you guys. Okay, look at me. You two, switch around. What? Switch around. Hurry. Michael, go on the other side. Let Ben it. <laughs> Real. 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 Whoa. That's a big Come on. fish. We got it. We got one. We got one. Can I stab it? No. We got one. We got you, little fishy. We need to get that fish out of here. Why? <laughs> Don't let it go. It's not big enough. Aw. Don't look at it. Can we just not big enough? Don't look at it. Right, it needs to be on. This is our first fish of the day, and it is super tiny. And then you gotta hold it, okay? What? You have to hold that fish. He who catches it, he who holds it. So those. I'm not holding it. Yeah, you are. I'm not holding it. That's how tiny it is. This time, when I catch my fish, I'm gonna hold it. It depends how big it is, though. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for that fish. <gasps> Look at its mouth. Hey, wait. Look. Ready? There's a big fish. Go back. Can I not hold mine that I catch? <gasps> I think it's dead. Oh no, it's not dead, it's gone. Okay, good. It's gone. And we're off. I'm sorry, I thought you were giving it to me. Like, it's barely deep. Ah. Yeah, we're good. So I could touch the bottom of ice cream. No, no, it's ten feet deep. Daddy. No, it was like um, five feet deep. Um, Daddy. Yeah. Um, um, I want that hook. That you want that hook right there? Yeah, that. Slurpees of soft plastic. Can I see which one you want? The first time, the hook is Where's all the fish at? Um, we'll see. Yeah. <gasps> oh my! <gasps> Where's all the fish, Theodore? Right there! There's a shark! Look at that thing! What are we looking at? A shark! What's a shark? What a shark log? Oh, it's a log. Oh my gosh, there's a shark! Oh wait, no, that's not a shark. It's too scary. Unless it jumps on and bites our faces. <laughs> then it's a shark. There's no sharks in this lake. No, there isn't. That's just the yard. Plus. You got it, Theodore? Yeah. Wait, I'd like to stab it. See if I can help with it. Yeah. It might have gone away. Get it? No. Okay, Caden, can you step out of there, please? Get it. Get off? Yes. yes! Literally right as it's about to come on. But it was a tiny one, so. Oh man. What'd you catch, Michael? <laughs> Seaweed. Come look. Bennett, 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 put it back. 